the physics of MRI, the recap of T1, T2, fat saturated T2 image, stir image, contrast MRI, proton density sequence, phase in, phase out, and others. So in terms of the physics, first there are four phases in which an MRI is done. In first phase, we give a magnetic field because of which all the protons in the body, the hydrogen atoms, they line up. Second, we give a radio frequency uh, energy which is applied perpendicular to the magnetic field. Third, after this RF is given, the protons tend to go to their low energy mode. We, uh, so in this, if it is going relaxing, with the, T, uh, with the longitudinal axis, it is known as T1, and if it is relaxing along the transverse axis, it is known as T2. And lastly, the energy which is reflected out from the photons when they go to their low energy mode is captured and the image is formed. Now there are two important things to remember in this. One is T3, that is the echo type, in which this is the time in which we give the radio frequency energy and we take it back. That's the echo type. And then DR is the repeat pulse in which the previous sequence, how many times we do that, that is known as a DR. Now in T1 imaging, which we generally see, we have a short DR and short ET. So what basically happens is fat is very fast. FF, fat is very fast. So it goes to its low mode, energy mode very fast. That's why it is seen as white. The water is a lagarde because of which it doesn't go back to its uh, low energy mode fast. That's why it is seen as black. So in these T1 images, you, you have a very high signal to noise ratio. That's why you can see your anatomy very nicely in this. Okay, there is a general rule in which we say that the bone marrow which we see in the vertebrate should be brighter than the disc. If it is not brighter, then it is something pathological. Now in T2, what we generally do is you have a long TR and TE. That is the echo and the repeat is long. That's why both the fat and the water will be seen as white. And this is very nice to see the CSF and the disc structures which are compressing on the nerves. Now, why do we require other sequences? So in T2, both fat and water is seen as white. So how do we differentiate between these? That's why we require fluid sensitive, fat fluid sensitive sequences. The first is fat saturated, T2-weighted image in which we suppress the fat. Now this gives a very nice sequence in which we can see these kind of stress fractures or parse fractures. However, there are some disadvantages with it. It has got a lot, lot of inhomogeneities and in metal it gives a lot of artifacts. Now then we have a stir image that is short tau inversion recovery in which basically the fat part of it in which it reflects back to its normal energy, that is selectively nullified and additionally uh, with it, the disadvantage is even the mucin and the methemoglobin are nullified. However, it gives very good uh, imaging. So suppose if this is a fracture, a very small innocuous fracture, but if you see on an uh, MRI, you can see there is some mild amount of disc injury and it has got profound posterior ligamentous injury. So also this can't be used with post-contrast MRI, uh, the stir images. Now let's come to the contrast MRI. In contrast generally an IV gadolinium is used. Now what is the inherent property of gadolinium is it has its own magnetic field. Okay? And it accumulates in the hypervascular regions. So it will be bright on the one. So where it is used, basically it would be used to differentiate between the benign and the malignant uh, cancer uh, deposits based on its enhancement and the patterns in which it is uh, present. So if you see over here in the MRI, you can see this is, I'll give you a disclaimer, this is an L5 nerve root uh, nerve sheet tumor in which you can see these worlds of uh, accumulation of this contrast from which we can find out from the patterns and the accumulation what kind of a tumor it is. Then we can also find out location whether it is intradural or extradural mass 
and lastly uh, we can now this the last one is very important because if you have a patient who comes with an repeat pain post operatively you need to find out whether it is scarring or if it is a repeated protruded disc so the protruded disc are generally avascular and the scarring will have some vascularity so from that we can differentiate with the contrast whether it is scarring or a repeat repeat uh, disc protrusion now let's come to more which we don't see regularly now there is a proton density sequence it is generally used in patients with multiple sclerosis if you have a back of mind uh, doubt that this patient might have a multiple sclerosis which for uh, causing demyelination then we can use this sequence in which we can see a good amount of patchy uh, involvement of the cord because of the multiple sclerosis then comes an different one in which we do an in phase and out of phase imaging so basically the science behind it is if there is a presence of fat in the lesion then it is generally a benign lesion so what we do is if uh, on a phase uh, phase out sequence if there is no drop in signal which we have a cut off of generally 20% in the interest of region as you can see over here okay if there is no fat present then there is a high chance it could be a neoplasm now there are some different sequences like a diffuse weighted imaging now the basis behind it is if there is a tissue change there will be a change uh, in the blood supply to that for example if there is an ischemia abscess of humor the blood supply will change that can be gra uh, grasped by the mri so in this patient it's a young patient with acute paralysis you see a mri there is no compression you be, uh, do a dwi in which you can find out there is an increased co uh, signal in dwi which shows it is a cord infarct lastly as an extension to dwi is a dti that is diffuse tensor imaging in which you get a better image and you can also track the white matter tracks so here you have a patient who has got a complete cord injury and you can see the uh, tracks those are completely disrupted over here okay then you have a dynamic contrast imaging in which you can see the new angiogenesis which can be seen in the malignant tissues here this is an uh, malignant tumor and this is a non malignant tumor so you can differentiate between these with a dynamic contrast imaging in which you take mris at sequence once you have given a contrast La, uh, and there is an mri angiogram which can be done to see av malformations you can do ct angiogram or an mri angiogram anything now uh, related to the uh, spine you have mars and there's most of a lot of our patients have been previously operated and that gives a lot of artifact on mri so there are some general steps which we should the, which the radiologist uh, follows or when we should know these steps in which we should be seeing less of these artifacts first is to avoid fat saturated sequences use stir imaging more use low field magnets thinner slices and adjust the bandwidth and the matrix size so there are some proprietary sequences from g it is known as a mabric and from siemens you have the cmac so if you can see over here this is a normal sequence in which you can see a lot of artifact but lastly in this you can see the artifact has completely gone and you can see it far more better 